Welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I will be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open their studios to the public. For more information, go to the website svos.org. Our guest is a dedicated and curious painter. She is a community artist and a trademark holder. She is the living and breathing artist, Judy Gittleson. So welcome. Thank you, Sally. Nice to be here. Yeah, I'm so glad you could come and be on our show. Yeah, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to show you new work and old work and look at my work. Excellent. Well, tell us first a little bit about your background. How did you get involved in art and painting? Well, my mother, who's still living, who's 87, Shirley Gittleson, wow. is a painter. And a couple years ago, when she turned 85, she published a book of her work. And she's a um, career artist. And her brother, Paul Georges, was a New York painter, mm -hmm. painting along um, Fairfield Porter, along with Fairfield Porter, kind of a contemporary of Jackson mm -hmm. Pollock. And he was quite a career artist himself in the New York circle. And so I sort of came by it naturally. It was a field that was pretty accepted in my family. Excellent. So. <clears throat> Were you interested at a young age in becoming an artist? I actually was into animals, and I was kind of uh, called the animal girl when I oh. was a kid. <laughs> and I had chickens and rabbits and ducks, and I wanted to be a farmer and have animals. And my uncle, who was a neighbor and an attorney, um, upon hearing that I wanted to get a goat, said, if you get a goat, I'll sue you. Oh, no. <laughs> so I thought, well, I was Not about 11 at the time, and so I started drawing pictures of the farms, the families, and it, that evolved into drawing reams, notebooks, hundreds of drawings of these floor plans of these houses, and oh. that brought me into architecture. And so I went to architecture school at the University of Oregon, and I studied architecture, and I was still a little unconventional, a bit mm -hmm. unconventional, and I made a cake. Instead of making a model out of foam core, I made a model out of a cake. And um, <laughs> Was there a reason for it? <laughs> I just thought it would kind of show the uh, project well. And, but a friend of mine said, look, you're doing all these art projects. It seems like art is more your bag. And right. so I applied to CalArts, the Disney school in Southern California, mm -hmm. which was a very new school in 1975, 76. And I was accepted. Oh, very nice. And I headed to CalArts from University of Oregon, and I stopped in San Francisco with six months before school. And um, I got stuck, and I fell in love in San Francisco with the city and with the time. And ah. I played in musical bands, and I'm a has-been in the new wave circuit. I was <laughs> in three musical bands. And wow. So you stayed in San Francisco, and you never went to Los I Angeles. I never went to Los oh. Angeles. But I, you did study art. I did, and I went to the San Francisco Art Institute, uh -huh. which is a beautiful school. Oh, yeah. And I met David Hockney there, and a lot of people went through that school, too. Mm -hmm. It was a cool school. Excellent. Yeah. So for today in your current practice, what inspires you to paint? Well, I think it's a calling. You know, the beauty of painting is you don't really have a choice, or of being a visual artist, you don't really have a choice. It's something that is compulsive, but um, I think the artist Chuck Close said, we don't wait for inspiration. Artists don't wait for inspiration. Right. They just go to work. And so it's a compulsion that's evolved into a, I just have to do this. And I'm curious about, and this speaks to how I paint too, I follow my paintings. So I'll right. talk about this more, but they start me somehow. Somehow there's a seed that starts, mm -hmm. and I'll show it in an example when we're looking at the slides. And then I follow the painting. I go where it's leading me. And that's a really um, hard thing to do because right. we're driven. We're in a driven society, and we have to complete this project. And so there's a lot of, i got to finish this that's in the back of right. my head. Project-oriented. Yeah. With get it plan. done, right, plan it, get it done, and, and you're done. And with art, it's an entirely 
um, almost backward thinking where you not only have to not get it done, you have to <gasps> rest at certain times and, and you have to follow this crazy pacing that is mm -hmm. otherworldly. It's not in my hands doing. And I love that about it. Right. It's, it's a very magical art. So, so I think the answer to the question is um, I've chosen this path. I decided this is what I'm going to do. Excellent. Yeah. And so you brought some images. I did. That we want to take a look at. And you can tell us a little bit about how you progress from the very beginning parts to the completed painting. So let's cool. take a look at those images now and very good. See them. So this first painting is called Yellow Swirl Plant. And in many of my paintings, you'll see an S curve. I don't know if you can actually see the S curve in this one. But when I'm describing this plant, I'm doing it in a more conceptual form, but that it's a fabric. It's got a turning. It's got a um, exterior shell almost that wraps into itself. And somewhere in there, I know, is an S-curve. But that's <laughs> <laughs> um, how I would describe this piece. And um, oftentimes, my paintings will begin with a gesture. And then ah. again, I'll follow the gesture. And so there may have been a, um, a, a, a single S line in there somewhere. And, and it's interesting, in most artists' work, you can always see the same signature mark, the same line that hmm. occurs over and over. Interesting, yeah. I can see several S. Uh huh. And it looks very structural to me as well. There's and the this next one. Is a tree, and I'm love nature and I love trees and plants and um, I think with the tree I kind of see them in a really female form almost like an evening gown kind of like the the um, arms the branches or mm -hmm. the the females arms coming down to the waistline to the cascading of the skirt and um, I love shading on a tree too and one thing that's nice is you can see that it's a tree, but there aren't really trees that stand that long and narrow right. with the, that uh, canopy in that way. Yeah, and very specific shading and shadow, too. It's very mm -hmm. interesting. I like that piece. A bit um, surrealist and, and, and dreamlike, a bit of dream in there somehow. So. And what's the next one? This is a piece called Two, and you see it's titled Two. And oftentimes I'll start a painting with a word or a symbol. And the story behind Two is I teach. I have a studio called Art for Well Beings where I teach uh, many different people. But mm -hmm. uh, one day two students came in, and one of them promptly got sick and threw up. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was really upset that, you know, only two people showed up for a class and I had right. to clean up after one. And it's like, okay, <laughs> I'm a enough. mother. I don't really need this at work as well. So I went home and I painted two came in, one puked. And that was the <laughs> genesis of this canvas. And then the word two became stronger and stronger. And what is marvelous is that's the genesis, some life right. event. And then the word two, the T became very symbolic of the male form, sort of uh, ah. upright, and it's almost uh, having these seeds come out of it. And the O became very female and had these eggs come out of it. And then W became a, a nest of sort. So this one's yeah. a real clear narrative. And the other thing that's really remarkable is the T became a very Christian symbol and the O became a very Muslim symbol, oh, you know? And so yeah. it's like, wow. But that wasn't your intention when no, you started. <laughs> it was like a little narrative of my world and my day. Very and nice. And the W could also be like a bridge uh -huh, connecting right. the two. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. And, and a theme that is constantly reappearing is the idea that when two entities touch and meet, that is creativity, oh. the intersection of two things. This painting is called Think, and you can see the word T-H-I-N-K, and again, a word that oh, is, is the... Oh, there it is. It yeah, took me a little, a little while. Right. 
and it's a little harder to see. And some of the words that I use um, just disappear completely and become an abstract form. Think state is think, but the idea of think might be um, that it's a spiral, which I use a lot. But a spiral is when you're thinking, there's a seed, a seed of thought. And think begins around the dot of the eye, maybe. There we go. Wow. And the colors are beautiful in that one. I really like the contrast. Thank you. And um, what I like to do is intersect, um, like the spiral in the word think intersects with the architectural, the standing upright. And then you create different areas by the intersection of two. So do you think you draw on your architectural studies background in the absolutely, art? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Spatial division and, and let's see what's next. And think was. Um, this is a painting called Hills, Trees, and Lake. And it's just another reverie on nature and the kind of breathiness of uh, nature. And a lot of what I deal with is, to the porosity, porousness of, mm -hmm. of uh, paint as a film and um, the solidness of uh, paint and how you can see through nature. You can see through right. trees. You mm -hmm. can see through movement. And um, a little bit of um, barely discernible line between the hills and the sky. How do you choose your colors? That dark, dark blue is such a contrast with the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Well, color is really intuitive for me. It's a real like, oh, I like this. Oh, this next to it. But now I'm beginning to study that more. And oh. I'm beginning to take it more like, what am I doing here? Which is really neat. that. As an artist, you're constantly studying. You're constantly right. studying not only other artists, but your own work and going like, what's this about? And there's, I think that there's like 10% execution and 90% reflection, you know, that right. you, you stand back that. from your work. And I don't know the proportions, but this is a painting of Greg, my boyfriend. And this, um, <laughs> does he know that? He does know <laughs> that. And he uh, appreciates the, uh, positive reflection of himself. The idea of this one is um, that this the generation of energy is at certain points. So for him, it's kind of began maybe where his mind is thinking or his third eye. And, and that his nose, I think, is sort of a, a place where you can go in. And, and um, he's kind of connected to the earth, like the shoulder is um, right at the earth's level. And, um, I did a series of Greg, myself, and my daughter, and uh, they were all about the energy emanating mm -hmm. from. And in the portrait of myself, it was very ocular, very right eye. Right in your and, eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's a thinker. He's a thinker, right? This is a painting called "Wow, Would You You Shut Up," and <laughs> that's what it says in the upper right panel. And the bottom left one says "Diamonds and Cave." And this one actually came from a dream. And um, mm. so I just woke up and went, wow, um, that's a great thing. And it was kind of about, oh, here are, my, here are my jewels in the cave. Now, if I give you all of them, will you just be quiet? Yeah, be quiet. <laughs> be quiet. I can't even say it. Yeah, you can't. Well trained no, in don't, don't worry. You it looks like it's in four parts. It is in, in four panels. Oh. And they're How 36 by that? 48 each Ooh. panel. So it's. Um, 80, 96 by uh, 72. Wow, that's very large. And this is a painting called Mudra, which is the um, yoga, any kind of connection mm -hmm. with the hand, hand symbols. And you can see that, can you see the hand in there? It looks like that. Yep. And um, this one is seven feet by seven feet. About, and this is hanging in downtown Palo Alto and Han Bistro. Wow. Uh, this is, again, about the energy, kind of the essence of, like, when you connect your finger to one another, that there's a, a spark, right. the connection of two again. So how long does it take to paint a seven-foot by seven-foot painting for you? About 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, three hours. No, um, I work on a lot of paintings at the same time, so it's kind of difficult it's hard to, to tell. say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and um, over a period of a couple of months. Would yeah, you say? something yeah. like that. I mean, some of them paintings have a real life of their own. Like right. some of them, I'll start and they'll come very quickly and readily and easily and go. I'm done. And some will be like, okay, I think I'm done. And right. then uh, Audrey, the director, said, you are the, the director of the show, said, you are the judge. And I went, oh, I'm the judge. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so I have this dialogue with these paintings. And I have this kind of, um, what is it called, exercise. This is a painting called uh, A Cup by a Window with a View of Some Water Behind the Cup. And it's. Um, deconstructing a cup, I would say, into an energy plane. And you can see some of the planes, and mm -hmm. you, you can't quite get that there's a cup in there, but you get the handle, and once you're told it's a cup, and then it's kind of uh, a bit about cubism, cubism yeah, where you can see many that. sides. But the other piece that I like is that you can see through and beyond, and you can create a narrative with putting it in somewhere where you can see what's happening behind it or beside it. So. I can see the cup. I'm a tea drinker, so uh -huh. I definitely can see yeah. the energy of the drink. This is part of my new series called A Human System. And I'm working on a series called Up So Close. And a lot of this, I call this the um, nautilistic period. And I also like cause and effect, that something's next to something causes it to fall very um, uh, one right after the other. So that a line comes through something and weaves around and it bumps into something. And like in the center, that sort of muscular thing is almost jettisoning the little uh, sharks per seed pod or something. And that maybe mm -hmm. it'll get captured in another, in another corner of that. So very nice. Thank you. This is the studio where I teach art for well beings, and I teach people with developmental disabilities, typical mm -hmm. kids, and in the background is the paint by puzzle. That's my trademark, and we're going to refer to that. Oh, tell me more about in just that. Just a little bit. What is the paint by puzzle? Well, paint by puzzle. It says art for well beings on that paint by puzzle, and that is a group of panels that I put together and outline one picture across many of them and an individual fills in their part and then I reassemble it and put it all back together. And you have a trademark for I it. I do. Very nice. Yeah. Right, let's see you demonstrate some of your painting techniques okay. and talk and a little bit about your materials. All right, cool. And I'm working on a painting called You and I just got over the flu and I'm not contagious anymore. But here's the Y and the O and the U. And I brought that part up about the flu because while I was uh, sick, this painting came to me. And the Y and the U are on one plane. Well, the Y and the O are on one plane, and the U was sitting up. And so that's the mm -hmm. genesis of this. I also work for Golden Paints. And today I'm going to work with some heavy body paint and um, some glazing liquid. And I'm just going to fill in this one area just for a few minutes here. I'm working with titanium white right here. And I'm just going to go over. And this is very rare to not paint with a smock on. So I'm much more careful than I am in my regular work. What but does the glazing liquid do? Glazing liquid slows the drying time. And acrylic paint dries by evaporation. And it can slow the drying time about 20 to 45 minutes. And so when I'm working in the Palo Alto area in the summer especially, I'll put glazing liquid all over my palette, or if I want to take a break, or if I want to do layering with glazing on top of it. So I'll show you some glazing right here right now. And I'll just put some little bit of red with glazing liquid. Well, it's not going to actually work here, so we'll talk about that later. But I'm, I'm just going to work in this one area for a little bit. And just give you a feel for how I paint so you can see. I use a very dry brush. I don't have a lot of water. I use a lot of paint. Why is that? What does um, that help you do? You know, I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to ask someone else. <laughs> <laughs> do 
you like the feel of the texture of the paint that way? I like how it works that way. Yeah, I like the response time. I like that I can get what I want out of it. And a dry brush will allow me to do what I'm doing right here. Like I'm kind of scrubbing. Can you hear all the scrubbing? And yes. I put a little bit of um, <clears throat> paint on top of another layer and the other layer sort of comes through a little bit. So tell us a little bit about the choice of colors. What are your intentions now? You say you have to choose the color in the moment. So what are you doing? Well, that's kind of hard to say um, at the moment. But I think what I look for is, if, if you notice, I never or I rarely put my brush in water and clean my brush. So I just go from one to the next. And I work kind of blending things. So here I've picked up a brown and a white and a red and I'm just working between the white and the brown and the red and building up a and they're all still kind of open and wet and easy to move around so that's just kind of a quick demonstration of how I paint and what's cool about it is it is it's just magical like my relationship see how I just put that yellow right there the relationship to the yellow will totally change this shape okay did we have enough with me painting that was great yes cool thank you should I come back to the table now yes come back right. over thank you why oh you <laughs> so tell us a little bit about why you why? why OU? Well, why do you choose letters as your um, background or your themes? I think it becomes uh, a word that sticks out. Like I told the story about how two came in, one right. puked, and the two became important. And then the two becomes the architecture, the symbol, the start of the painting. And then from there on, it's a process, just like I just mm -hmm. did over here to follow the areas, to work on red to brown, to red with white in between, mm -hmm. and weaving. And um, I made clothing for a while in my life, too. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit like draping. How does fabric fall? How do you respond to it? What's the prompt that moves you over this way? Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit about what am I moved to do next? OK, and then in response to that, and I'd say that the hard part for my work is to um, not have that determined quality and to ride the wave of where mm -hmm. this uh, drape is going, where this fabric is leading me. What's the path it's taking? And so I can begin with the word you. And if in two months you come back and you go, where's that painting you? I go, mm -hmm. oh, look, it looks like that. And it might be a total spiral. You know, there might right. be some kicker that takes it so I have to be very attentive to where the painting is going and allow the painting to become. Oh that's very interesting so you start with a structure uh -huh. and you choose your colors as you go and then you follow but at some point you must come to a place where you say I need to finish it to tighten it up a little bit and to, your paintings have beautiful lines and so is there a finishing process at the end of it? There is, and sometimes it's like, oh, that was surprising. You know, mm -hmm. um, meaning that there's an element, and for me, there kind of oftentimes is an element of surprise that is the, oh, that's interesting, because I have to keep myself right. interested. And so if there's an element of surprise, the three paintings that we have around us are my newest, and they're very... Um, I'm still curious mm -hmm. about them. I'm like, what is happening? They're so much darker right. in a lot of ways. The painting that's right here is these kind of bigger shapes. And I was a bit aiming for larger shapes. But then um, in, in certain lights, you can see there was a spiral up there. And then this um, coiled line up at the top, mm -hmm. um, it has that spiral feeling. This wedge looks like a light coming out. And I can't, 
quite remember what the surprise was that made me go, okay. But there right. was a piece of it, and, and that's always fun because not only do I not know what its significance is, but I know that it's exciting me. Well, tell us briefly what shows you're going to be in. What's in your future? I have a show coming up the beginning of the year at the Martin Luther King Library in San Jose. Oh, that's a beautiful place. It's really cool, and the show is titled So Close Up. And the idea is that we can get so close up that we almost can't see the forest for the trees. I did right. the inner ear, the outer ear, the nape and the neck. And these series, the painting behind you is the um, kind of an eye. There's one called mm -hmm. Either Eye. And um, these pieces are a lot about how close we can get to something and not be able to see what it is, mm -hmm. but um, maybe it's a maybe it's a figurative something, like right. abstract that's so close that is it a figurative something? Is there something figurative in mm -hmm. there? Very interesting. So you have a whole show at the library. I do. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more of the challenges of showing, just briefly. Well, I would say my greatest challenges are what I kind of addressed before, getting to the pacing, to the right temperament. And in my work, I teach a lot. I have the studio Art mm -hmm. for Well-Beings, and I teach for Golden Paints. And a lot of my challenge is to get time enough in the studio where I can right. go, ah, oh, I can settle in and not feel like I have to finish this by 3 o'clock. And there is something great about having to finish something by 3 o'clock, but a lot of being an artist is reflection right. and, and taking that time to spend because we can't get there before we get there. So, you know, unrushing. I love the craft. I love right. the hand. I love the watching the magic that happens when I'm mixing colors and watching a transition from a black to a red or a red over a blue and, and how in different lights they'll look different too and how the color that right. abuts this one color really makes that shape um, change so I really like the cinematic aspect of the act of painting. Well thank you Judy, that was very interesting and thank you for your demonstration I really appreciate you being on Talk Art. very interesting and thank you for watching. And thank you for having me.